Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Forbidden Empire. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One day, Jonathan and his girlfriend are caught in bed by the girlfriend's father. The father orders the guards to throw Jonathan out, but the woman throws a blanket over them, buying Jonathan enough time to escape. Jonathan later tells his girlfriend in a letter that he has a new invention to help him draw a map of the world. Elsewhere, a group of women are floating candles on a lake. A member of the group, named Panashta, swims away and disappears into the tall grass. The rest of the group looks for her. Her friend Nastasia finds her drowned in the water, but Panachka suddenly wakes and grabs Nastasia, causing her to fall into the water. Fortunately, she is saved by a mysterious horned creature. The creature sets her down beside Panachka and then leaves. Later, the people from the village find the two women. The village chief, who's Panachka's father, takes her back to the town. She whispers something about a sheep's skin to the chief and requests that he find Brutus, a student priest, and ask him to pray over her. The village priest delivers a sermon while the chief returns to the town. Nastasia has suffered brain damage from half drowning in the water. Panachka's body is brought to a church. Brutus is inside, and the chief offers him a thousand gold coins in exchange for granting his daughter's last wish. Brutus is locked inside the church for three days. He starts praying, but is interrupted when the candles in the church go off. He raises a cross and draws a protective circle to shield himself from evil, while a Panashka's ghost appears and rushes at him. Meanwhile, the priest steals the gold coins from the chief. He then pays off the guards, Overko and Dorosh, and tells them to unlock the church doors. The priest then enters the room and is shocked upon finding a dead Brutus on the floor, causing him to drop the coins. He shouts the church is cursed and orders the two guards to seal the church off. They pick up the coins and seal the church after. While Overko boards up the hole in the roof, a crow flies at him, knocking him off the roof and causing injury to his eye. They return to the rest of the villagers, as crows gather around the church, scaring all the villagers away. Meanwhile, the girlfriend gets pregnant with Jonathan's child, while Jonathan continues on his travels. Two thieves try to steal from Jonathan's Ferrari carriage, but he manages to stop them. The thieves introduce themselves as hungry student priests, and Jonathan invites them for a meal. The two students tell him that a friend of theirs named Brutus was lost in the village nearby. They tell Jonathan the story of how the three of them got lost and ended up in the village, where an old lady invited them into her home. They ate and drank their fill, and the two of them soon fell asleep. Brutus, being the only one awake, sees a naked woman's shadow in the room. He looks around, but no one's there. He turns around and suddenly sees the old woman. When he turns around, the old woman is there. She starts undressing, but Brutus walks away from her. He suddenly notices the old woman's shadow has a tail. The shadow disappears, and the old lady appears behind him as a witch. She grabs onto his back and flies through the roof with him. They fly to the church, and the witch drops Jonathan. Before he can hit the ground, she catches him, and they glide over the swamp. The water's reflection reveals that the old lady is actually Panashka. The story ends, but Jonathan only laughs at their tale. Meanwhile, the villagers erect a cross in the town hall. The priest prays over the villagers. Suddenly, the sky is filled with visions of demons and monsters. The crows from the church flock to the village and scare the villagers. Upon learning of Jonathan's destination, the two students run out of his carriage. Jonathan goes out to pee, but a thick mist suddenly appears. Wolves emerge from the mist and scare the Ferrari horses. They run away, and Jonathan barely manages to chase them. They are chased by the wolves. The Ferrari carriage rampages into the village. It abruptly stops and launches Jonathan into the mud. Jonathan introduces himself to the villagers, while the horned creature watches secretly from a distance. Jonathan heads to the town blacksmith with the village chief guard to have his measuring instruments that were broken in the crash. The blacksmith shows Jonathan his inventions before inviting him to his house for dinner. Meanwhile, the chief calls the priest over and tells him to arrange a funeral for Panashka, whose body is still in the church. The priest refuses and hurriedly leaves. The chief calls his assistant and orders him to call Jonathan. Jonathan is bathing when the mentally incapacitated Nastasia enters. When she leaves, Jonathan bars the door behind her with a broom. Suddenly, an old lady appears behind Jonathan and calls him a coward before leaving. Jonathan notices a hole in the ceiling and gathers that this is the room where Brutus was dragged away by the witch. He rides the broom and runs up to the hole. The chief's assistant emerges from the hole and catches Jonathan. He tells Jonathan that the village chief wishes to meet with him in secret. Jonathan goes to the chief, who asks him to make a map with the church at its center. 
He promises Jonathan a thousand gold coins, but this is a lie as he has only one coin left. He gives Jonathan the coin as a down payment and sends his assistant to help Jonathan. At the same time, the priest orders the two guards to follow Jonathan, as he fears that the chief will use him to help out with his daughter's funeral. They look for Jonathan and pass a forest. The horned creature appears, but only the Ferrari horses can see it. They soon arrive at the blacksmith's house. Jonathan returns from the chief's house and climbs in through the hole to hide the secret meeting. They all end up having dinner together. During dinner, the two guards tell Jonathan the story of Brutus and how they escorted him to the church in the past. According to their story, Brutus was entranced by Panoshka's beauty. He tried to touch her face, but her body fell to the ground. When Brutus turned around, Panoshka was standing before him. Using her witch powers, Panoshka controlled the vines around them to capture Brutus. Brutus draws a circle on the ground, using chalk. Panoshka is unable to touch him while he's inside the circle. This buys him enough time until the sun rises and Panoshka is forced to return to her coffin. The story pauses and the conversation resumes. One of the men shows Jonathan the chalk and tells him that it's for protection against evil. The two guards resume their story. Apparently, the next evening, Brutus hammers Panoshka's coffin shut. A few moments later, the candles in the church go off, and Panoshka's coffin levitates and flies toward Brutus. He tries to swing the axe, but is too slow and gets hit by the coffin. He finally manages to hit the coffin and injure Panoshka inside. However, the axe gets stuck on the coffin. When the coffin rises into the air, Brutus is lifted with it. He lets go of the axe and falls to the floor. The axe falls and nearly lands on Brutus. Panoshka escapes her coffin. Brutus throws the axe at her, but it has no effect. The sun rises and Brutus is safe. The story ends and Jonathan starts hallucinating. The food turns into bugs and his companions all turn into horrifying monsters. They attack Jonathan and he is forced to hide under the table. He grabs the chalk and draws a circle around himself just as the monsters flip the table. The circle makes Jonathan invisible to the monsters. The old lady from earlier reveals herself to be Panashta. However, she also cannot see Jonathan. She summons V, an ancient god, and asks him where Jonathan is. Green flames and black water erupt from the floors. V emerges from the darkness and opens his eyes, revealing Jonathan's location to Panashta. She embraces him and whispers to him that he should find the one under the sheepskin. Jonathan wakes up the next morning surrounded by the men, who have turned back to normal, and the old lady. He returns to his room and finds the assistant waiting for him. He heads to the church, but is seen by villagers who report him to the priest. Jonathan climbs up to the roof of the church and tells the assistant to bring up his instruments. He then starts mapping the area. Meanwhile, Dorosh arrives at the church and lights his pipe. He sees Jonathan on the roof and aims his gun at him. He stops himself and leaves to call for backup instead. He forgets his pipe, which the horned creature suddenly takes. Dorosh regroups with Overko, who is busy burying the gold coins that they picked up from the church. Overko goes to the church to watch over Jonathan, while Dorosh tells the priest about Jonathan's activities. The priest assembles the villagers and delivers a sermon. He turns the villagers against the chief and Jonathan, calling them sinners and Satan's servants. Jonathan finishes and sets the map aside. The map suddenly disappears, and Jonathan peeks into the hole in the roof. He is startled by the crucifix swinging at him and falls from the roof. The assistant is barely able to save him. Jonathan wants to climb back to the top, but the assistant stops him and says the church is indeed haunted. They return to the village and are bombarded by rocks that the villagers throw at them. Jonathan runs to the chief's house and tells him the church is haunted, but the chief threatens to flay him alive if he does not finish the map. The priest returns to his room and orders Overco to capture the chief's assistant. They forced him onto a spiked chair and tie him down. Upon torture, he reveals that the chief ordered Jonathan to make a map. They release him after. The assistant sneaks into Jonathan's room and tells him that they have to run away. The assistant secretly brings Nastasia with him and they get ready to leave. Nastasia prepares food and then heads to the swamp. She sets the food down onto the water and it floats away. The assistant tells Jonathan to go ahead and looks for Nastasia in the swamp but accidentally runs into the horned creature. He runs out of the swamp and meets the mob of villagers. He alerts them about the monster, and they charge into the swamp to hunt it down. At the same time, Overko returns to his buried coins, but finds that they are missing. He finds Dorashi's pipe there, and assumes that Dorosh stole the money. Dorosh arrives looking, and they get into a fight. Overko loses but manages to run away into the swamp. Dorosh chases him, but Overko ambushes him from behind and kills him. He loots Dorashi's body and steals his gold. 
Nastasia walks into Overco while he is looting the body. The guard hands her a knife just as the villagers arrive. He frames her and pretends that she killed Dorosh. The villagers call her a witch and capture her. They throw her into a pit in the town hall. Meanwhile, Jonathan rows past the villagers. He finds the horned creature and stabs it before falling back into the water. Out of nowhere, his map case suddenly appears. He grabs the case's strap and pulls himself out of the water. Jonathan sees the horned creature was only an empty outfit made of sheepskin, meaning that the culprit wearing it to commit the hormone crime had gotten away. Jonathan runs back to the chief's house and shows him a piece of the sheepskin outfit. The chief orders him to find out who has worn the hormone outfit. Jonathan agrees but asks the chief to guarantee his safety and save Nastasia, who is about to get killed by the mob. The chief goes to the town hall and orders the guard to free Nastasia. The guard refuses. Overco sneaks behind the chief and hits him on the head, killing him. The priest orders the villagers to capture Jonathan. Jonathan tries to fight them off, but ultimately loses and is thrown into the pit with Nastasia. Jonathan tells Nastasia that he knows that she has been secretly feeding the horned creature to show her gratitude to it for having saved her from drowning back then. While in the pit, Jonathan overhears Overco and the priest plotting to take over the village. A guard suddenly goes down into the pit and retrieves Nastasia. They publicly humiliate her. The assistant tries to save her, but gets beaten up. The villagers tie Nastasia to a cross and bring her to the swamp. They put her on a boat, and the priest tells them that if she floats, she must be a witch. However, Overco makes holes in the boat to make sure that it sinks. They plan to use her as bait to summon V, the ancient god. Meanwhile, the chief guard swaps places with the guard watching Jonathan. He sets Jonathan free. Jonathan is leaving when he sees the assistant trying to kill himself out of guilt at failing to save Nastasia. Jonathan saves him and tells him that they can still save her. He orders Jonathan to put on the sheepskin costume and lead the villagers to the church. He goes to the swamp and distracts the villagers, leading them to the church. Jonathan enters the church and sees Panashka's body. While he looks at her, a stranger tries to steal his maps, but Jonathan catches him. The stranger attacks Jonathan to no avail. He then tries to run, but Jonathan pulls out his gun and stops him. It's revealed that the stranger is none other than Brutus. Jonathan guesses that it was Brutus who swung the crucifix previously, causing Jonathan to fall from the roof. He guesses that Brutus was in love with Panashka, and he should be the real hormone smith who humiliated her before leaving her for dead in the swamp. Panashka's last words were intended for Brutus, who was wearing the legendary hormone outfit when he committed the crime. However, Brutus tells Jonathan that he is mistaken. He tells Jonathan he was the one who saved him when he was drowning in the swamp earlier. He adds that he did not kill Panashka. It turns out, Brutus also swapped over Ko's coins for Dorashi's pipe, setting the two men against each other. Brutus then tells the real story of Panashka's death. The two of them met when Panashka was swimming in the swamp. They began talking, but someone wearing a sheepskin suit appeared behind Brutus and hit him on the head. When he woke up, Panashka was half dead in the water. Nastasia arrived and saw Panashka. Panashka grabbed at her, causing her to fall into the water. Brutus saved Nastasia from drowning while wearing the sheepskin in order to hide his identity. Since that day, Nastasia has been feeding the monster out of gratitude for saving her life. Just as Brutus tells Jonathan that the priest betrayed him, the priest arrives and hits Jonathan on the head, just like he did with Brutus back then. Brutus runs away and hides in Panashka's coffin. The priest angrily reveals that Panashka tried to seduce him, causing him to force himself on her. He then killed her as he blamed her for making him sin against God. Jonathan tries to escape, but the priest stops him. The priest tells him no one will hear him if he screams, and if he does, the villagers will be too scared to enter the church anyway. He tells Jonathan that he is the Messiah, meaning that he's God himself. This proves that he is only a power-hungry man, bent on manipulating and preying on the villagers' superstitious attitude to put himself in power. Unfortunately, the villagers arrive at the church and are able to hear his entire speech. Before killing Jonathan, the priest tells him to pray. He then raises the axe to kill Jonathan, but the crucifix falls on him from above and kills him. Jonathan makes the sign of the cross, shocked at the miracle that had just happened. The town later returns to normal. Overco tries to steal Dorashi's old horse, but the horse kicks him in the face. He falls to the ground and his gold coins spill everywhere, causing the villagers to laugh at him and shame him for his greed. Nastasia and the assistant also end up as a happy couple. Panashka and her father are both laid to rest, with Brutus presiding over the funeral. Jonathan enchants the village children by creating a film machine with the blacksmith. 
He then leaves the town and resumes his journey to chart a truly accurate map of the world. Meanwhile, the girlfriend's father learns about Jonathan's travels through the letters he confiscated from her. He repents for having judged Jonathan so harshly and plans to publish Jonathan's magnificent tale. He reads Jonathan's letters to their son, hoping that he will learn what a great man his father is. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.